Uh, let's maybe talk a little bit about what we're going to be looking for on the United States women's national team side of things. Um, you know, we, we just got a couple of games, uh, uh, final prep games against Colombia for these for this team before they head into this qualifier. And I think you said it best already, Lisa. You know, there's there was another common thread that we saw within these couple of games around this national team that has mm -hmm. kind of been following them for a little while. And as I was covering the game and having to do a recap or analysis on this game, that's something that I, I still was left with as, as we closed out that second game against Colombia. And it took forever because there was a lightning <laughs> delay. There was a lightning delay. So there was like an extended, a 90 minute game went to like a, uh, you know, 130 minutes. And so it's just, it was, a, it was a lot, quite frankly. Um, but in this second match in particular, I think we were hopeful to see some improvement in terms of that scoreline. I think when we were making our predictions with Danielle, I think at one point said, hey, I'm going to say four goals. Lindsay said four goals. I was like, ah, I'll just say five. Like, oh, that, that did not happen. That did not um, happen. The breakthrough goal for this team happened uh, because Sofia Huerta forced the issue, quite frankly. Uh, service was headed away by uh, Manuela Venegas. It was an own goal in this game. And and I thought I was, I liked that. I liked that this moment came early in the game for this U.S. women's national team. It came just, you know, after the 20th minute. And I said, okay, great. Like Which is much earlier than it had in the yes. first match against Columbia, 55th minute or so at halftime. Correct. It was 0-0 zero, zero between these two. So I was like, these are the things we wanted to see, right? These little things improve. And yep. you think like, once you get that first one, it's going to open things up, but it just didn't happen that way. So they go into to halftime, one, you know, leading 1-0. If you're Columbia, that's promising for you. And then we yeah. saw in the second half, there were a couple moments where Columbia snatched a little bit of that momentum away. So, yeah, if you're looking at the numbers, no. Like, seeing the numbers compared to the offensive stats, um, you know, with, with the United States compared to, to Columbia, we're talking <clears> – <throat> a 2-0 scoreline, excuse me, and you're talking, you know, 18 shots to six shots, you know, two on target, you know, compared to, to five for the United States. But uh, we definitely saw those moments where they tried to test the back line and a listener a little bit. And I think that that was something that they were embracing. This team was mm -hmm. going to embrace that. We heard Vlako Andonovsky say, hey, we want to go ahead and see what this team is going to present us. We might see these challenges during the CONCACAF W Championship. We're satisfied with the team's ability to go out there and pick up the win against what was presented to them. But even though you're satisfied with that, you have to say maybe that is still a little bit of a concern, especially as you're looking at this first game going up against a team like Haiti that looks like they're going to be bringing it to their competition instead of trying to sit down in these low blocks that the, that the United States is anticipating facing. So that's my biggest thing right now with this team. If we just remove... If we just remove what happened in 2021, because this is actually a narrative that's been following this team since that Tokyo game, since that bronze medal finish in the Olympics, there was this sort of narrative like, OK, so there, it's taking them a little bit long to sort of unlock some things from the opposition. But let's just remove that. Even if we're just looking at this six, seven game stretch for the United States, they're heading into the qualifiers undefeated. And yeah. that's you got to feel good about that. You they're, have to feel good about that. And they're, and winner, they're winners in six games, you yeah. know, and each of those six games have been by some type of multi-goal scoreline, but this little thing is still sort of chasing them. Is it going to take them an hour to unlock what's in front of them? It, exactly. I think that's a really important question that we have to ask. And, and you mentioned the opening goal most recently in the friendly was an own goal for Colombia. That was the fifth own goal that the United States have forced in 2022, which is the most in U.S. women's national team history. So it, they've got something going for them there. But I, I want the United States to be able to come in with a game plan and be able to execute that. Um, 
it's also important to note that between these two Colombian matches, between the first starting lineup and the second starting lineup, we saw nine changes for Vlako and Anofsky's side. And those nine changes saw a player like Carson Pickett get a start. Huge for her. It is tremendous. Um, I could talk about Carson Pickett forever. However, she's not going to Monterey, Mexico. There was also players that got starts and got minutes that Vlako and Anofsky alluded to that he has nine of his 11 starters set. And the last two that he were evaluating were the goalkeeper position, most likely between Casey Murphy and Alyssa Nair. Casey Murphy getting the start in the first match and Alyssa Nair getting the start in the 90 minutes in the second match. And then the number nine striker, whether it was between Ashley Hatch or Alex Morgan. Hatch got the start in the first game. Alex Morgan got the start in the second game. And... He, he said that those were mainly the two roles that he was evaluating. So when you look at the starting 11 from the first match to the second match, um, personnel-wise, sure, you can look at that. But when you look at the rhythm of how these two different teams played, the unlocking of it was – harder in the first game for the United States and they didn't do it as well. They didn't utilize the width of the field, which they did much better in the second game when they had Sofia Huerta and Carson Pickett in their outside back roles, really pushing high and, and occupying that space, which pulled Lindsay Horan and, and Christy Mewis, who were the defensive midfielder six back much, much farther, uh, giving them less of an attacking presence and much more of a defensive playmaking presence because the outside backs were pushed so high. So when we look at the heading into these CONCACAF W championships and playing against Haiti, um, we know essentially what we're going to see. Uh, I imagine we'll see Andy Sullivan get the start in that sixth role with rotation between Lindsey Horan and Christy Mewis playing back there. And honestly, I, I liked Christy Mewis in that defensive midfield role. Um, I think if she knows her role and she knows the understanding is not to score goals, but to find that connecting pass, to switch the point of attack, to control the tempo of the game, to dictate the play and, and um, have the forwards be checking back for the ball, which pulls that block out of shape. And if Mewis knows that, Haran knows that, they will be fine in that role. And, and we saw that against Columbia because those were the areas of the field that I was really looking at. Now, how long is it going to take for them to unlock another team? I think that's something they're working at on right now in film on the training pitch because you can learn so much from watching film and watching the forwards movements and where the opponents that are defending them track to and then how that opens up different space and having the freedom and the flexibility and the creativity as attacking players to read that movement, find the open spaces, and then occupy those spaces while also the players with the ball, understanding that that's where you're going to go as well. Um, that I basically yeah. just explained a creative offense. I'm, and that's I'm, really what we didn't see too much of in either of these games. I'm eager to see if this team could sort of build off these two matches specifically yeah. going into this CONCACAF tournament. You know, throwing out She Believes Cup, out the window, you know, a game against New Zealand where they forced three own goals, you know, throwing out the matches against Uzbekistan that were like completely lopsided scored. Just, these two matches specifically, I think I'm looking for them to build upon. I liked seeing the front three at times playing a little bit more centrally, a little bit more narrow, trying, you know, and allowing some space to open up for the wide players to attack, which these are things that I wanted to see. So, you know, seeing Christy Mewis, you know, a little bit more in that six row. That was something that I wanted to see in, in this match. And I liked what we we saw. So I'm hopeful that the transition from coming out of these two matches into CONCACAF W Championship will be the two games that maybe aid this team a little bit more than some of their prior matches in 2022 and the build up to this and in, into this moment. Um I think even with some of these, some of these areas that we're we're pointing out, right? This is part of, this is part of sort of the lore of this team. Quite frankly, the United States Women's National Team are the favorites in this match. They are entering this tournament as the reigning champions of this tournament. They won in in 2014. They won in 2018. Uh, they are the reigning. World Cup champions, you know, lifting the cup in, in 2019. And they are the number one ranked team in the world. So that part of like the criticisms and things like that and the analysis around these particular areas of the attack, I think comes, that's the baggage that comes with sort of being 
the number one team yeah. in the world. It's there's an expanded format this year. If you're a semifinalist, guess what? You're booking your ticket to the World Cup. Yeah. But I think if you're the United States women's national team and you don't come out here and you don't win this tournament, that's a disappointment for for this, you know, this program as it has been built, as this sort of machine that goes out there and racks up wins and produces results and wins titles and win cups and wins medals, et cetera, et cetera. If you don't go out there, it's not I don't know if it's going to be enough for this team uh, to just say, okay, we qualified and that's mm -hmm. enough. I just don't think they're built that way. They've shown us multiple times. They're just built different. So we will see uh, how that turns out. Uh, and I think we're going to get, um, we're going to get a lot more answers. I think in this first match uh, against Haiti, than maybe we might've anticipated in some of these uh, prior seven matches that they played uh, to start out 2022. I completely agree. And as you mentioned, if you make it to the semifinals, you're in. So um, these first round, this first round and these first two rounds are incredibly important for every single team in this. Um, and it all starts on Monday. Yeah, USA start on versus Monday. Haiti. Lisa, give me a player who you want to have a big game against Haiti. Uh, for the United States. Yep. Um, I, I mean, Mallory Pugh, I want her to be able to take her creativity to this Haiti side and unlock their back line, unlock their box, get good shots on goal, get crosses into the box, really connect with Emily Fox, who's in behind her on the left side. I, I, I want Mallory Pugh to have fun and like play her best game ever. We've seen her slowly building up. I don't want to see a plateau at this point. I want to see her continue to climb and hit that peak. Uh, what about you? I'm with you for all the same reasons, but for Sophia Smith, I really liked what we've seen out of her, both her club playing with the Portland Thorns and what we've been seeing from her recently with the United States women's national team. And I want to see that progression continue throughout this tournament. And we're going to be here for you all throughout the entire duration of the CONCACAF W championship. You can watch Every single game across Paramount Plus. Lori Lisa and I will be covering the games. We're going to be doing live recaps for all the United States women's national team matches. So make sure that you subscribe to us on YouTube so that you never miss out on a show for when we react to the results 